to me, uh, the crowd uh, the first days, so probably uh, they went back to their institutions. So thank you for, for staying for until the last day. Uh, before we start, I want to thank to our uh, organizers and also to Joan and Stover and Judy Benigno, who made an excellent job, like uh, preparing uh, all the, by putting in place all the badges, uh, access to the lab, uh, food, that was really good. And well, let's start the session uh, 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 of today. And our first speaker is, uh, Evgeny. 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 Sorry. <laughs> Hi, good morning. Hi. <laughs> Hi, good morning. My name is Evgeny Fixman. I am, uh, will bring my presentation in a second and then we'll continue. Okay. So uh, uh, again, my, my name is Evgeny Fixman. I'm uh, with Intel. I'm uh, working as application engineer on in financial domain. Uh, we are located in uh, Parsippany, New Jersey. Yeah, there's Intel also there. Uh, this work was done uh, in cooperation with uh, two other guys uh, from Intel. It's Michael Watts and Sergey Vinogradov, uh, which are uh, working on uh, Intel TBP flow graph. Okay. Uh, sorry, what I should press that. Okay, uh, be before, um, I would like to start with uh, expressing some terminology, terminology that we uh, used to have in our work and how it expressed in uh, structuring the, the software. So in general, we, would, uh, we, uh, we divide our application into three levels. Uh, the first level is uh, task parallelism or what we also maybe know as message passing protocols like MPI. And uh, this level is to describe higher uh, level of parallelism, like different tasks in the application which are not related uh, between them. The next level is fork join, uh, which represents uh, parallel uh, uh, data parallel work. Uh, and we can address or correlate it with parallel for or parallel reduce uh, constructs. And the last level is uh, actually vectorization or utilization, utilization of uh, CMD registers. And we need to make sure uh, that all of these uh, layers are efficiently used in order to have the best performance of our applications. Okay, so between Microsoft and Apple, okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, I think for yesterday I uh, attended a couple of presentations and I see that most of you are using OpenMP and MPI. Our work is a bit different. We live in C++ world and uh, we use uh, TBB, uh, Intel t threading building blocks, also known as Intel TBB for uh, addressing multi uh, multitasking and parallelism. So what is TBB? TBB is uh, actually this year they uh, celebrate 10 years anniversary. So congratulate the guys. Uh, TBB is uh, 
a library which consists of uh, parallel algorithms, such parallel for, parallel reduce. It also has uh, concurrent data structures, uh, queues, and, and other things that you can use from multiple threads uh, safely. Uh, recently, they added uh, in a flow graph interface, which can be used to express uh, data flow dependencies or functional dependencies. And on, on the lower level, uh, they have uh, interfaces to work directly with threads and synchronization primitives, such as mutexes or atomic counters, which are very helpful for uh, uh, shared memory applications. Uh, and the last, and maybe not the least, is they, have, they provide scalable allocator, which is very efficient in multi-threaded environments. Okay. Now, what are the benefits to use uh, build, uh, TBB compared maybe to OpenNT? Uh, TBB is library-only solution. It includes header and runtime, and, uh, and runtime library. It doesn't uh, depend on, on, on the compiler or, or efficient implementation of the compiler. It does require C++ support, and for advanced features, you need C++ 11 or even 14. But in general, if you have recent compiler, you can work with TBB. Uh, it's supported as, uh, as a commercial version, which uh, works on uh, Intel processors, but it's also available as open source project, which works even on ARM and PowerPC, and supports different uh, operating systems, even uh, uh, OS X or Android and uh, other variety. Okay. So what is TPP flow graph? Uh, this flow graph is a set of interfaces that the developer can express a data dependency between uh, operations. So here we see it can express as a graph where nodes are the operations or functions and uh, the edges are the dependencies of data flow. Okay, so here is a, a simple example of hello world application, which expressed with two nodes, one for to print out hello, and another one to print out word, world. Okay, and here, this is how you define the operation with a simple lambda function. It's C++ 11 uh, format. Uh, and then you just make a connection between the two uh, nodes, and then finally, it, it will print out hello world. There are four different groups of nodes in, flow, in the flow graph interfaces, uh, and they're divided mainly by functional, which you have multiple different level of, of, of describing your functionality. You have buffering and things like queue, even priority queue, uh, sequencer node. There's also things like uh, split and join, where you have complex uh, graph dependency when some operation depends on multiple uh, conditions so you can use join node and then runtime will manage the dependencies and uh, execution of the dependent function and there are also the other nodes uh, like uh, that are used for you know for non-usual operations and in our work we use uh, two new nodes which is asynchronous node and uh, composite node to express more advanced functionality uh, in the flow graph. Okay, so this is on, on, on a simple level, TBB flow graph can be used as, a, as a to describe flow dependency, but we found a way to use it also as a coordination layer. And that means that we can, by the flow graph, we can combine, connect together different hardware, or even it heterogeneous with the software components or with software blocks to that can be executed on different uh, devices. So in this example, we have three devices. Each one has a different color. And uh, this is our graph. It's pretty simple, but it can be more complex. And what uh, is shown here, that each node, functional node, can be executed on a different device simultaneously. Okay, and uh, in theory, or practically, we may have much more uh, tasks. So imagine each node is a task, but uh, in pra practically, the graph will be much more complex and it will be much more nodes or functions to be executed. And then what we can achieve is the dynamic task distribution between the devices. And this way, uh, do perform dynamic load balancing between different devices 
on in our application. And later we, I will show how we achieve that. Since it is coordination layer and, 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 and we can say where the node can be executed, it, it can, a flow graph can uh, perform similar operation as the uh, OpenNP or float pragma. Okay, so what we can, so that we show that in actually in C++ we can use an offload portion of our code to remote device. Uh, also, uh, if your one, if your block is implemented with a library which uh, sits on top of TBB, it can be easily composed into the overall application. For example, and it's not possible with OpenNP. An example is uh, MKL library. So if you use, for example, your block is calls to uh, uh, gem, okay, M matrix multiplication, and open and the code with within MKL can identify that you run within open P region, and then it will execute uh, sequentially. But uh, but but it's not the case with TBB. So MKL also provide uh, for BLAS is they provide uh, for some functions they provide TBB based layer. And then in this case, even your function, if even if you're inside the TBB, uh, TBB uh, parallel block, the plus as the gem will still execute it in parallel and it will utilize better the resources of the machine. Okay. So how we do a flow, or how we divide work between different devices. So we come uh, with a proposal with an, a new node which is called distributed node. And this node actually it, 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 it's described here. It, con uh, it, con it consists of three parts. The first part is to decide where, we should, where I should execute uh, this block or function, and it can be done dynamically or statically. Okay. In our case, we did it dynamically, but in, uh, in general, in, 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 in it's much simpler way, it, 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 it could be done statically. Then we have a synchronous node when the when after the device after we select the device where we would like to execute the function if it's a remote device it, it it will issue a synchronous transfer if data if some data should be transferred it will uh, issue transfer to remote device and then uh, the, the, the same asynchronous node on the other part will will understand okay i need now i have a command that i should execute and will and, and then will continue execution from this point. In case the selection device decides, okay, I don't have resources to execute on the remote machine, it can stay the synchronous, okay, skip the synchronous, skip the remote execution and continue on, on the same machine. Later, we, when the graph propagates on this point, it can decide, okay, now I need to uh, go back to uh, the source machine and then it sends the data to the, to the uh, source machine and uh, an execution continues. Okay, and the point is this is what we still under development. We don't have this in distributed as, as open source or as, as production. Okay, so I described how we solve task parallelism. Now, uh, what we do with uh, uh, two, two other layer, for, uh, fork join and, and CMD. So let's say, uh, since I'm coming from the financial, from the financial domain, it's very common to use uh, Monte Carlo based method for uh, option pricing. Okay, if you want to, to price an option or a stock, you will, in complex cases, you, you, you will run a Monte Carlo simulation. Okay, so here's the original code, and I, I, it is built from two, uh, four loops. Okay, the first loop is, uh, goes over passes, and passes are independent, naturally. It's different Monte Carlo passes, so we can easily we can use we can easily parallelize or vectorize them, and there's a second loop which goes over time step, and this loop is a problem because uh, it has a, a backward dependency, backward data dependency between uh, uh, within the state, its state, and it means that we can vectorize it. And originally, what we do, we try to parallelize outer loop and vectorize inner loop, but this but but we fail. But if we will uh, work this way, we will fail. But what happens when we, when we parallelize the outer loop here with, parallel, uh, with TBB construct, we choose uh, the block size that we would like to use for tiling. And actually this helps us uh, to do what we call loop transformation or loop interchange. And then what happened, 
uh, the loop that works on, on, on specific block now becomes a lower level loop and the time, time step loops become a next level. And we easily can put, in this way we solve, we resolve dependency between the state variables and we can easily put pragma open with CMD on this loop because now uh, there's no dependency between uh, T, okay, with specific context. Uh, what, however, what we need to do, we need to extend uh, the state variables to add another dimension as the size of the block. Okay, so what we see here is that actually working with uh, fork and join and CMD, when we want to parallelize, we actually can also have more, more efficient uh, vector code if we do small uh, modification. Now, uh, another thing that we have support from Intel compiler, we can same code exactly same code can be generated and executed from the same model for both devices, for Xeon and for Xeon Phi. And what we just need to do, we need to do pra uh, add pragma offload attribute and tell the compiler, okay, usually you compile this code for uh, Xeon, but in this specific case, please compile it also to Xeon Phi. Uh, okay, now let's talk, talk about the application itself. So Stucky 2 is a, is a benchmark in financial domain. It's well known, it's uh, defined by uh, first year banks, all of you know. And, uh, and the good thing is that customers or banks def define the standard and vendors like Intel, Nvidia, IBM are implement them. And each vendor has its own uh, implementation which is efficient and tuned for, uh, for the hardware platform. So uh, this can achieve kind of apple to apple comparison because now no one can claim, okay, your, this is code is better for NVIDIA or this code is better for Intel or IBM. Uh, uh, what we, uh, Intel actually was the first company who, uh, which implemented as a benchmark and presented results in early into, uh, in 2012. Uh, Stacky2 implements uh, American style options and there are different options, American, European, and it depends when you can execute the option. Uh, it uses a Monte Carlo simulation for pricing and uh, the model which is based is requires a loop like I showed you which has dependency between different time steps so we, between different time steps so we can't vectorize it easily. Uh, the result of the benchmark of the benchmarks are Greeks, and Greeks are called because they have uh, Greeks letters, and each letter uh, represents uh, the risk or behavior of the option uh, for different market parameters. So, for example, theta are uh, uh, theta describe how the specific option price depends on the on uh, the time. Okay, when option can be executed. Rho, for example, it depends on uh, market interest rate on that specific time. And total, so total each, each execution exec, uh, executes seven different Greeks. And for each Greek, you may, you, we may execute, we, we execute different uh, tasks which are not related, okay, or, or I independent. And in general, for a baseline execution, we may have about 150 independent tasks running in parallel. Okay, so our uh, uh, test was running on uh, or this specific execution was utilizing two uh, uh, dual socket Haswell processor and it has two uh, KNCs, uh, two Xeon Phi uh, first generation uh, coprocessor within the same box. Uh, we use Intel tools like Intel compiler, uh, TBB, uh, MKL for different portion of our applications. Uh, application. In general, uh, as software stack, what you can see here, we have on the top level, we have uh, application or stack A2, which interacts with both flow graph and uh, the GCB node. And actually the GCB node, it sets the policy in which work should be distributed across the system. Uh, and then distributor node decide or execute it locally, talking, uh, talking to t local TBB scheduler or using MPSS uh, and actually SCIF 
to communicate with remote machine. Uh, we used proposed uh, distributor node uh, to run the application, uh, and uh, we used token-based approach, uh, which I described and I will show on the next slide, uh, to do a dynamic load balancing be between the devices. Okay, so this is how the graph, uh, stuck it to graph looks like. You have start node which starts execution. Uh, this is a random, random generator who, gen who generates random uh, numbers for, um, for, for the Monte Carlo. Then there is some task which doesn't require a pricer. It has, they have, they have their uh, own uh, pricer engine inside. Uh, and then we have a, a token pool. So with each, and we, we decide how many tokens will, for each, for every device, we'll decide how many tokens will be there. So for example, for Xeon, we decided every core will have its own token. And uh, for KNC, we decided F, every four cores will have uh, their own token. Okay, so actually, so for KNC, there are much more tokens than for uh, Xeon. Also, as, as you see, some of tasks require pricer and some of them not. So what we prefer is to tasks that are not require, that tasks that uh, doesn't require a price engine to be executed before, it will be scheduled in advance and prefer to schedule it on KNC. So what we did, uh, this pool was actually a pr priority queue and then we gave, and then we gave high priority for tokens that, uh, for KNC tokens. And we also did round robin. We, we measure priority in round in, in round robin manner. We assign the priorities in round in round robin manner. Then these tasks will be distributed uh, equally between uh, the two KNC cards. Uh, cards. Uh, okay. So so what happens actually now when the pricer comes and random number generator comes into the model? Then this this node will request a token, and if token is available, it will come. Uh, to this port, and this node will decide based on the token value where it should be executed. Then the execution will happen on the same device, on, 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 on the target device, and after uh, the value is computed, it will be sent back to the main, uh, to the main system. After this two task will be completed and the value will be available, uh, the Greek will be computed locally on the host and sent to the collector results. To the uh, to the collector. Okay, so here the same way as we used, uh, as I showed in with uh, CBB parallel before. Here we also can tell uh, can tell the compiler, okay, this specific node you should be uh, compiled on both systems, on on Xeon and Xeon Phi, and then this code can be executed on the, on the given time. On, this, on, on two different machines, so we don't we don't need to duplicate the code. We don't need to compile to to have two deeper two different uh, compilation models. It happens within, within the same compilation model, and compiler underneath uh, does the job. Okay, now let's talk about the performance. Uh, so, and I would show how the tools which I used are important to achieve. Or to uh, achieve the better, the best performance of the machine. So the first, so this is a different ma machine that we use. Starting and our initial point is uh, Ivy Bridge machine. Okay. Uh, it, so th this is a second implementation actually of of Stack it on Intel. And for for baseline for the baseline Greek time, it was required 4.8 seconds to to compute all Greeks for the for the given test, and uh, after that, when we uh, profile application, we see that we saw that a lot of time is spent within OpenNP runtime. And originally, the OpenNP was used for parallelization and, and task uh, and task distribution. After we changed this from OpenNP to DBP uh, and did small other optimization, we get almost we got almost 4.8, almost 5x speed up just from changing uh, the threading layer. Okay, so this is to show how. Choosing of appropriate uh, threading system is important for application performance. Okay, then, uh, uh, so 
with this number, it was not still not sufficient, and we were behind the competitors. So we decided to use uh, a Xeon, uh, Xeon KNC card, and it was in uh, early 2014. And uh, the way and the tools that we have we have then to do the heterogeneity or is to use OpenMP offload. Okay, it, it actually was Intel offload, and then we see that with with this we can good very good about 40% uh, speed up using another card. We added more resources and get more uh, uh, faster result. Then we when when we move to Broadwell based system, okay, for with, with the same. Uh, almost the same configuration. We, we got about 20% speed up, which is expected when we move from one generation to another. Okay, but, but then it was, uh, and then what happens, NVIDIA came with their new uh, implementation based on K80 and we were, and we again were behind. So what, so, so, what, so what we decided to use is to put another KNC side inside the machine. Uh, however, our original implementation was using OpenMP uh, offload pragma, and it has static uh, work distribution. And we saw that with static work distribution, we can't uh, add two cards. It's too complex for us. So then we, we moved to this uh, TBB flow graph based implementation. Uh, so we moved also now heterogeneity move from OpenMP to TBB, and, and we got from just adding another card and, and dynamic load balancing we got almost two x speed up. I think it's more than two x speed up, right? Okay. Uh, so now you see how it's important, right? To choose <coughs> the right tool for uh, for work distribution as well. And so the last common column is to show how the Xeon Phi, the second generation, actually KNL, is is good for this type of workloads. Here we have a system with a Broadwell AP, two Xeon, two 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 KNCs. And here we have one Xeon Phi system. And th is th the performance uh, is almost the same. Okay. So now what next? Next uh, we would like to work on uh, Xeon, on, uh, on KNL cluster. Uh, uh, now let's talk about the performance compared to the competitors. So the, this, the first three column uh, describe uh, Intel. Uh, architecture. So this is KNL, the numbers that we saw from, and this is K, uh, Broadwell with two Xeon Phi's, and this is just Broadwell. Uh, this is the, uh, the Greek's time is a baseline, and I think for now it's most important uh, test in this benchmark. Uh, so for this test, we are in Intel, we have winning uh, position. The other uh, latency workload is work on, on a larger uh, work. Uh, data size and uh, KNL is good in the middle, okay? Uh, NVIDIA doesn't have results for this uh, workload because it's, it's like it, it, it probably doesn't scale in their architecture for now. I assume they will soon they will come with some solution for that. Uh, important things what I, I, I also tell you, we have a quality test, okay? As lower numbers are better. So what we see, we still, we are faster on, on, on this case, we are faster and we also have much better qualities than the competitors. A another thing that's important to say is that we have the same quality results over all Intel uh, architectures or s solutions. And it's very important to our, our customers where they want to decide you know, if they should invest in new hardware or not. So once they choose Intel hardware, they good chances that, good chances that they will have the same result. Okay, so to conclude, uh, when you developing heterogeneous application or distributed application is complex, and uh, you, you should really consider to look on three, on three different levels of task, fork join, and CMD. Uh, Intel TBB flow graph provides a coordination layer and a low work distribution between different machines. Uh, we in Intel uh, maintain performance, uh, meaning position for performance and code uh, and coding so we would like our customers to use our code uh, or, or our work uh, our code and our style of work uh, and for the next steps uh, currently we have this distributor node work on, on top of MPSS we are we have plans to port it to use MPI or OFI 
Uh, and after that will be completed, we will run uh, it on KNL cluster or heterogeneous cluster between Xeon and Xeon Pi. Uh, we have a couple of challenges. Uh, like we want to schedule the work where the data is. It's common, uh, it's, I think it's common problem. And, but also we found that some of the tasks are better to execute on Xeon rather on Xeon Phi. And, and we want to find a way how we can prioritize execution device for, for specific tasks. And here is a call for you. Uh, if someone, so this is still under development. This feature is still under development. We are investing in it time. And if you want, uh, and if you would like to participate and contribute, you're welcome. Uh, talk to me after the presentation, during the break, or send email to one of us, and we would like to talk to you. Okay. I think we have two and a half time for a couple of questions. Yeah. <laughs>